Hi, beautiful friends of Bookish Fam. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. And if you are already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we are here to talk about some of my favorite new to me or debut authors that I discovered in 2023. All right, y'all. Well, we are now nearing the end of January, and this is actually going to be one of the final end of year slash beginning of the year wrap up content that I'm filming for y'all. So I hope that you enjoy. I did really well in 2023 in reading authors that I had already read before. I think if I remember the statistic correctly, 100 of the 157 books that I read were authors that I had read previously. The other 57 were either debut authors or authors that were new to me, meaning they had previously published books that I just never read before. And I'm proud of the fact that I was reading authors that I had already read because that means that I was reading a lot of sequels and it also means that I have curated a collection of authors that I just love and I want to continuously go back to. But of course it is also important to me to be discovering new authors that I also may want to support. And so I went through all of the authors that I had never read before in 2023 and I gathered a very small list that I wanted to talk with you about today. Now in the effort to reduce redundancy I'm actually not going to be talking about authors here that I've mentioned multiple times recently. So Alexi Harrow, Amelia Hart, and Abby Jimenez I'm not going to be mentioning in this video because I've talked about their books multiple times over the past few videos. I have raved about them. They've ended up in some of my favorites of the year. And so I don't think that it's a secret that I absolutely love the authors. So in all honesty, this video shouldn't be very long because I only have a select few authors that I actually want to talk to you about, authors that I really enjoyed the book that I read and I absolutely plan on continuing to read more from them. So I do want to briefly mention Stephanie Dre and Laura Kamoy because while their book My Dear Hamilton did end up in one of my favorite books of the year, I don't necessarily feel that I've talked about them or that book as often as some of the other ones that I'm actually not mentioning in this video. But I have mentioned multiple times in relation to My Dear Hamilton that one of the things that made that book my favorite was the fact that they were able to bring Eliza Hamilton to life so clearly and so vividly that I felt like I knew her and I was actually bereft by the end of the book when I knew that I didn't know her and that I was never going to know her and that there was going to be a lot about her and her life that we were never going to truly know or understand. I thought that they did a great job of showing what a remarkable, strong, steadfast woman she was who handled a lot of adversity, a lot of loss with such grace and strength. And because of that, I'm looking forward to reading more books that they have penned together. Now I know that they write separately. I know for sure that Stephanie Dre has a few other books out, but they do have one other book that they've written together called America's First Daughter. I believe that's following Patsy Jefferson, the daughter of Thomas Jefferson. I already have that book on my shelf. And even though I'm not as interested in or invested in Patsy Jefferson as I was in Eliza Hamilton, I just know that the way that these women write, I just know that they are going to bring to life, they are going to bring in three dimension this woman that I don't know much about, and they are going to highlight her remarkableness, basically. And I am looking forward to it. I just love when historical fiction is able to bring to attention a historical figure that might not be well known or might be well known, but maybe I don't know personally a lot about. And they are just able to make me wish that I had known this person. So yes, I do know that I've talked about my dear Hamilton multiple times on this channel already. So you could probably guess that these two authors are definitely notable and new favorites for me, but I did want to highlight them in this video for sure. Another one that I know that I've mentioned a couple of times here, but I definitely want to solidify her as a new favorite and author that I plan to read much more from in the future is Frieda McFadden. I read The Housemaid a few months ago and I really enjoyed it. I just really liked the direction that the book took and ultimately how it ended because I liked what that opened up for future books. I have The Housemaid Secret on my TBR already and I'm definitely going to be reading that and the third book that is coming out in this series in 2024. I also read a book called Never Lie, which was another thriller by her of course and what I really loved about that one is that she took a book that I thought was going to be entirely too predictable and she turned it on its head. It went in a direction that I was absolutely not able to see coming. So she so far based on the two books that I've read from her is able to craft these amazingly compulsively readable and engaging thrillers that just go in a direction that you are not expecting and I appreciate when a thriller author is able to do that. Now I will say that similarly to a lot of other thrillers these books are not necessarily well developed in terms of characters. They are almost entirely plot based but I still think that they are very engaging. They are fast paced. They are good to break a slump if you need to break a slump. They are certainly bingeable and I'm very excited to read more from Frieda McFadden in 2024. I know I will at least be reading The Housemate's Secret for sure. She has a couple of new releases coming out as well and I'm here for it. Give me all of the Frieda McFadden. I'm really just hoping that I enjoy her next few books as much as I enjoyed these two. Jillian McAllister is another thriller author that I'm certainly keeping my eye on. I read Wrong Place Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister way earlier in the year. I 
think it was probably in like February or so and I just absolutely loved that. That was a thriller that played with the concept of time and our main character kept going back through time first by days then by weeks then by months and then by even years basically trying to figure out what she missed in order to prevent her son from killing a man in the present and I just really appreciated the way that Jillian McAllister played with the concept of time. It's certainly not the first time something like that has been done and it's definitely not a book that dives deeply into time travel like it's not overly scientific or going to give you this plausible explanation for time travel or anything like that but I still thought that it was wonderfully done and then I read her newest release Just Another Missing Person later this year and while I didn't find it as compelling and engaging as Wrong Place Wrong Time it was still cleverly written and I appreciated that about the book for sure. So Jillian McAllister is certainly a thriller author that I have my eye on. I'm very excited to read more from her in the future. She has the capability of becoming an autobi author if she's not already. I haven't officially cemented her as an autobi author yet but she definitely has the capacity to become an autobi new favorite thriller author for sure. And really quickly I want to cheat for a second and I want to mention Sarah Buchanan and it's cheating to mention Sarah Buchanan because I have read every single book that she has written with Greer Hendricks. They have written four or five books together and I have read them all and for the most part I've really enjoyed them and in 2023 she released a book called Gone Tonight. Now I don't necessarily think that's her solo debut. I don't know off the top of my head. I think she might have written books on her own before but this was the very first book that I had read by her of her writing on her own and I was a little bit nervous I'm going to admit going in. I wasn't sure if I was going to like her as much as I like her books with Greer Hendricks but I did. I really liked the story that she crafted. I was engaged with it the entire time. I liked the direction that she took. It follows a mother and daughter and the secrets that the mother has been hiding from her past but also the daughter who is willing to do anything she can to uncover those secrets and what that would mean for them. I just enjoyed it. I liked the way that it was written. If I remember correctly it was actually narrated by Kate Mara which I wasn't expecting and she did a really good job although I do think that the book could have used two narrators to differentiate the perspectives more easily but overall it was just a very solid reading experience and I am certainly looking forward to reading more from Sarah Buchanan on her own in addition to the books that she writes with Greer Hendricks. So I wanted to kind of give her an honorable mention here. Another one that I definitely want to spotlight is Mickey Brammer. I read The Collected Regrets of Clover earlier this year. It was a book of the month selection and I was not expecting to have that book blow me away like it did. It follows our main character Clover who is a death doula. She basically spends her entire life ushering people into death and these are really people that don't have anyone else and she has kind of vowed after losing her grandfather that she wasn't going to let anybody else die alone and she considers it a great honor to be there witnessing these people's last breath, their regrets, and things of that nature. I absolutely adored Clover. I adored her going out and actually living her life because in this story she's in her mid-30s and she's really not done anything. She's never been in a relationship. She's never been in love. She's never been kissed. She barely leaves the apartment that she's lived in since she was a child that she shared with her grandfather. Her only friend really is an octogenarian and this is really about her learning to live and make friends and love and I just thought it was beautiful. It's very thought-provoking of course because it makes you think about death and there was a lot of just really beautiful things about this story and I don't hear nearly enough people talk about it to be honest. It is certainly character driven. If you are not a character driven reader you might not appreciate this book like I appreciated this book but I just thought that it was wonderful. I just loved everything about it including Clover herself as a character and I am really hoping to read more from Mickey Brammer in the future for sure. So Mickey Brammer definitely deserved a spot on this list. Another thriller author that I definitely have to mention is K. Alice Marshall. Now K. Alice Marshall had previously written primarily YA if I'm not mistaken and What Lies in the Woods which came out very early last year was her very first foray into an adult thriller and I absolutely loved it. I thought that it was incredibly well crafted and it, even though it contained some tropes that I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of I thought that the way that she used them was unique enough and inventive enough to make it so I really didn't care that she used them and I really enjoyed the way that she used them actually and I have her newest release already on my shelves. It is definitely a top priority when I can get to it. I will probably be getting to it very soon in January if I can at all and I'm excited to see what she is able to do with it to be honest with you and if I love this one as much as I loved What Lies in the Woods she will certainly cement herself as an autobi staple thriller author for me for sure. And of course I also have to mention Carly Fortune. Carly Fortune wrote Every Summer After. Every Summer After did make it as one of my top books of 2023 but I don't think I've necessarily talked about that or Carly Fortune quite frequently on my channel. One of the reasons why this book really stands out in my mind and therefore Carly Fortune stands out in my mind is because I went into the story with little to no expectations and I came out of that story with a true book hangover. Carly Fortune in that book she was able to create a relationship that felt very real but very flawed. It was very raw. It was a very emotional. You felt connected to the characters. You felt their chemistry. You rooted for them. You wanted them to be together and when things were going badly between them you felt that as well. There was a lot of emotion I feel in the book and I feel like it 
takes a really phenomenal writer to be able to do that. It's one of the reasons why I love Abby Jimenez so much is because very rarely do romances affect me like Abby Jimenez's romance do. Now I'm not going to say that Carly Fortune is an auto by author for me going forward. I really want to give her another chance to give me the same experience but I couldn't leave her off this list just because of how much she was able to shock me with that first romance. How much it did for me when I was reading it and how much I loved it and appreciated it. So she for sure is a notable author for me especially when I had no expectations going into that story. And then the last two authors I'm going to talk about are tentative authors but I really need to read more from them in order to kind of cement them as new favorites. So I read The Family Game by Katherine Stedman and that was a thriller that I really enjoyed. It was about a very twisted family who liked to play messed up games and what happens when a woman is about to marry into that family and basically the patriarch of the family gives her a cassette with a recorded confession that indicates that he was part of a murder essentially and what she is going to do with that. And I just thought the overall premise of it was very interesting. I thought that it was well executed. I thought it was engaging from start to finish. And I know that Catherine Stedman has written other books in the past that I have not read and they've never really interested me. But now that I've read The Family Game, I would be interested in reading her future books going forward. If you have read Catherine Stedman, you'll have to let me know if you have read any other book aside from The Family Game or if you've read maybe all of her books, let me know what you think. I'm just briefly mentioning it here just because I did enjoy the experience that I had with The Family Game and I would be willing to read more from her in the future. Similarly with Colleen Oakley, I read You Were There Too. Now I picked up Colleen Oakley because the synopses of her books sound absolutely fantastic and some of them like You Were There Too kind of borders on the speculative because it follows two people who have been dreaming about each other. They've never met and they don't even think the person is real until one day they actually meet and they kind of have to figure out what they're going to do about that. There is obviously a connection between them. There's obviously a very soul connection. There's a chemistry between them and attraction between them but yet at least the woman I'm trying to remember is married and she has a very wonderful man. It's a very great relationship and so you as the reader are kind of torn because you like her husband but you also like this man and you're wondering what the purpose of the story is because why is she being introduced to this man if she's not going to be with him? So the story was very thought-provoking. You're not really sure who to root for and I just really loved what Colleen Oakley was able to do with it and then some of the other books that she's written some of which I already do have on my shelves are very intriguing indeed and so I'm really really hoping that Colleen Oakley just becomes a staple auto by author for me because I think the premises of her books sound absolutely wonderful and I'm hoping that they are not disappointing but again until I read more from her I'm not really gonna know I'm not really gonna be able to solidify her as like an auto by author or anything but this video is really just talking about some of the notable authors that were new to me or debut in 2023 that are certainly now on my radar and I plan to read more from in the future. All right everybody that is it those are just some of the authors that I wanted to highlight from 2023 that I had never read before and I now certainly plan to read more from. Of course please comment down below and let me know some of the new to you authors that you read in 2023 or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty go ahead and leave me a heart emoji in any color you choose. You all know that I love seeing your comments and emojis down below. I absolutely appreciate the engagement and it helps me and my channel so very much. And as always if you like this video or if you just like me please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I promise to post one video a week but usually I do too and I would love to connect with you in any of those videos or on any of my other social media platforms which I always leave linked down below along with any books that I may talk about in a video. Until next time y'all.